Hey everyone, Nick Raboy here from Couchbase. We're going to take a look at the new eventing service that's available in Couchbase 5.5 uh, Server Edition. So 5.5 uh, is not currently out as of right now. It is in developer preview, but that doesn't mean that we can't take a look at it. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with eventing, so it kind of works like triggers. So when documents flow in and out of the database, um, you can create event functions that trigger um, upon certain circumstances based on your logic. Um, so the example that we're going to be using today is we're going to say, you know what, if a user document or a person document has changed and that person document contains unencrypted sensitive information, then we're going to perform some kind of action. So in this case, we're going to say, if a social security number is present unencrypted, and that, that is very sensitive information. If it's present, then we're going to send a notification to a remote web service, uh, which then can maybe send out an email or it can do who knows what else. Uh, but the fact that we're sending this to a notification service um, means that we're, we're taking some kind of preventative action. And that's just one of many possible scenarios that you can use the eventing service for. Um, and so it's the first one that came to my mind, actually. So on the screen, you can see that I do have Couchbase up and running here. Um, I do have three buckets, two of which are actually going to be used for this project. Um, so we're going to be using the example buckets. So we have example, which is going to be our source bucket for all of our data that, that changes. And then we're going to have example eventing, which kind of acts as our metadata bucket. Um, so for eventing to work, you do need a metadata uh, bucket. And that could be named whatever you want. I just, I just decided to call it e uh, example eventing so that way um, I have a somewhat understandable uh, naming convention for my application. Uh, we will be also creating a Node.js application uh, for this tutorial because we need a service to consume, um, well, to actually be used with the events. Um, so we'll, we'll get there uh, as the time comes. But for now, let's go ahead and start with the eventing tab and we're going to say add a function. We're going to say we want to use the example bucket as our source. We want to say, let's go ahead and use example eventing as our meta. And let's go ahead and call our function SSN check. We're not going to worry about any of this other information. We're going to remove the bindings and we're going to say add code. Uh, you can see that we now have two different functions here for SSN check. We have an on update and an on delete. We're going to be focusing on the on update. So we don't really care if the data was deleted or not. We only care if it was created or changed. So let's go ahead and start adding some logic. The first thing that we want to do is we want to say, you know what? We know that there's going to be several different types of documents in our example bucket. We only want the person document. So we're going to say if doc, and that doc has a type property that equals person, um, because it's highly unlikely that a social security number exists on a product document. Uh, we're going to then do the following. We're going to say, and this is red, regular expression, so we need to use a regular expression to determine if it's a social security number. You know what, I'm not a, I'm not a regular expression wizard, um, so instead I'm going to actually copy from a Stack Overflow post. Uh, the URL is in the URL bar if you're interested in reading the whole post, but I'm going to copy this function that was created by a user. I'm going to go back into our eventing code here. I'm going to paste it in. I'm just going to shorten it. I'm just going to say is SSN. And then we can test some data against this regular expression. So we can say if is SSN dot test. I'm going to say doc dot SSN. So if, if uh, there's an SSN property present in our document, uh, we're going to test it. And if it tests as being a valid SSN, then we need to do something about it. But before we can do something about it, we need to create our Node.js application. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the following. We're going we're gonna to go to a terminal, and we're going to assume that Node.js exists on our computer, and we're going to create a very, very simple application. So we're going to say, you know what, make a directory on our desktop. Let's call it uh, functions app. We're going to navigate into it. We're going to say npm init y, uh, and that will create a new package.json file. We're going to say npm install. We're going to say express body parser. And we're going to say save. Finally, we're going to say touch app.js. And that's going to hold all of our logic. Uh, let's go ahead and open that with an editor. 
I'm going to be using Atom for this example, but it doesn't really matter what you use. Go ahead and open up that app.js file, and let's go ahead and start adding some very simple code. So we're going to be using Express Framework. And at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're just going to have a single endpoint that can be hit from our database. We're going to say constant body parser. So these are the two dependencies that we installed. We're going to say var app equals express. We're going to say app.use. We're going to say body parser.json. We're going to say app.use body parser dot url encoded and we're going to say extended true and then we're going to create our one endpoint so we're going to say app dot post and again this isn't a node.js tutorial this is more on eventing but we we need something to work with so we're going to say uh, for our endpoint let's just call it a notify endpoint and we're going to say request response so that way we can work with the re request and do something for a response. Um, so we're going to say console.log. Let's go ahead and say post. And this is going to just say that we hit this endpoint basically. It's not absolutely necessary. Uh, but what is necessary is we're going to say response.send. And uh, we're going to say request.body. And actually, you know what? Uh, just, just for kicks, let's go ahead and say console.log. Uh, request.body to see what was passed to us. Then we need to serve this. So we're going to say um, var server equals app.listen. Let's listen on port 3000. And we're just going to say console.log listening. All right, so we have our very basic uh, web application here. Now I'm actually going to run it in my terminal. I'm going to say uh, node app.js. So it's listening. So we can go back to our uh, code here where we can actually start doing a curl request um, because you know what? We found a social security number. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's go ahead and say var response equals curl. We're going to say HTTP localhost. And you know what? It's not actually localhost. Um, so um, we're, I'm running it on a different machine on my network. So let's go back to our uh, terminal here. Let's figure out the IP of this particular node application. Um, so it's actually going to be this IP. So I'm going to copy that over. That's going to be on port 3000. And it's going to be the notify endpoint. Now for curl options, uh, we want to say the method is going to be a post request. And the data for this example, we're just going to say doc. Um, if you wanted to, you could just pass the meta information, so the ID. Um, but you know what, for this example, we'll just say doc. And if we wanted to, we could print out the response um, inside of our debugger for Couchbase. So we can say, you know what, maybe curl. And then let's go ahead and say response. All right, so let's go ahead and save it. Now I did save it, and I can go back to my functions if I wanted to. It's undeployed. It's not actually usable yet. So as a security precaution, um, we're now talking about going cross origin here uh, for these for these requests. So what we need to do is we need to go to the settings, and we need to do advanced query settings, and we need to specify which URLs are allowed to be accessed. So we're going to say, um, let's go ahead and enter that IP address. So we're going to say HTTP 3000, and we're going to uh, add it, and we're going to save it. So now Couchbase can make requests through curl uh, to, to my uh, other machine, so the one that I'm using right now. So I saved it. I go back to eventing here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I want to deploy it. So we're going to deploy the function. And then uh, once it's done bootstrapping, with a little bit of uh, luck, hopefully it will send a request to our Node.js application, which is currently listening. 
So it's running. I'm going to go to buckets. I'm going to go to documents. I'm going to say add document. I'm going to say enter a boy is the key. Um, we, we need to set uh, the basic information. So we're going to say type. Uh, the type is going to be person. And it's going to have an SSN. This SSN is going to be, let's say, 111221234, which is a valid format SSN. So we're going to save it. It's saved. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our terminal. You know what? It worked. So it, it, hit, it printed out the notify. It also printed out our document. So if we wanted to, like I said, we could probably send over the ID of that document. It'd probably be a little more useful from the meta. But the fact of the matter is we've now identified that um, something has come in that we've, we've checked for through the eventing service through a function. And we're sending an, a, a curl request to some kind of notification server potentially. Now, it's not the only use case when it comes to the Couchbase eventing service. Uh, maybe you want to do document manipulations or who knows what, what the case be. Um, you could do that automatically through the server and not through your application code. 